All right, guys, we got a special treat for you today. We have some of the very best neighbors in the whole wide world. Well, we've been looking for any excuse to work with said neighbor, and today's the day. I got a project that fell in my lap that is perfect for none other than Dave from Dave's Auto Center. This is the problem with this, this car. It's had an oil leak that I cannot fix. He's gonna take some Prussian blue, he's gonna paint the outside of the seal surface. Now he's gonna put that on there wet, and he's gonna show you something, and now he's gonna pull it right off. On this side, it's pushed off back to the seal area, all that, that dye, that in, we're gonna call that indicator dye. But on this side, didn't touch it. And so you're like, what the heck? What the crap? How could that be? And that covers hole compared to the crankshaft is kicked sideways. It's not centered. How are you going to fix that? That's like, are you kidding me? How am I going to fix that? I got to modify that front cover. I can't change the center line of the crankshaft. I can in my machine shop, but I don't want to pull a motor. I mean, that's like, that's crazy work. So what's this? What's the smart way to fix it? We're going to show you. I'm going to pull that cover off. I'm going to make a tool. I'll show all that to you and it's going to blow your mind. What we have is this beautiful Land Cruiser, and Dave's going to help us get to work on it. Pleasure to finally meet you in person. You too, Dave. I've seen you on the tube, and now it's time to actually have you in my shop. Yeah, thank you. You know, neighbors for over, what, 30 years? Yeah, and uh, neighbors with great names. They, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Cool. Well, let's check it out, dude. When Caleb called me about this project, I said this is the perfect time yeah, yeah, yeah. to collaborate with Dave's Auto Center. So, well, you, here's, you don't know this, but here's why it's the perfect time. I cut my teeth at a Toyota dealership for about five years in my career. Really? And the old FJs, I know this truck. Well, perfect. It's right up yeah. my alley then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I got a call from Caleb. You've talked to Caleb, right? Uh-huh. Caleb said, hey, this guy's got this old 69 Land Cruiser. And it ain't got the old, old, it ain't old got start. It don't have a Toyota motor in it. No, he's got a, <laughs> yeah. He's dumped a lot of money into it. He's got a son who's 18. He's going to be wheeling down the hurt. And he's in Darren. Really cool guy but his son's super excited to have something to do a little around it. Yeah. So we brought it here and I was like, well, before we even look at it, I'm calling Dave. <laughs> well, the first thing I can tell you is it's either a 305 or a 350. It is not an FJ40 uh, motor. Aftermarket motor. Yeah, man. And uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, you know, I'll tell you, the motor that came in here, uh, it's a 2F. I'm trying to think of the code on it, but it's a straight six, carbureted, bulletproof. And the reason, here's why it's bulletproof. The motor was made for forklifts, it was an industrial motor. And the connecting rod, the width of the connecting rod is about that big. I mean, it's got so much uh, surface area, it, 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 you'd be hard pressed. The motor, you know, it's a torquing motor like a diesel. The max rev on it's probably three, 3,500. Right? But that thing is a torquey thing. But, but, you know, old Chevy's fine. Let's find out if, uh, find out. Let's this find one. out what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on the Tough Ring Pro. A ring that was inspired by NASA because we use fluorosilicone, which is the same silicone that NASA uses, which makes it durable, flexible, and comfortable. It's got different colors to go with every outfit. And as you can see, a logo that's going to make you scream, Yeehaw, America! I love this ring because I've always got my hands in either a motor, chaining down trailers, chains, binders, in the mud and the guck. I don't want to get my nice rings tarnished. I don't want to get my finger snagged on anything. So tough ring is my ring of choice. Toughest ring on the planet. And you gotta get one. This is what you gotta do. In the description below, there's a link. Click that tough ring link, order yourself a tough ring pro, and I'm gonna go ahead and send you two more tough rings for free. Plus. Free shipping. What's better than that? I'll tell you, every one of our rings has got a 100% lifetime warranty, which means if you break it, you lose it, you scuff it, you ruin it, I'm gonna send you a new one for free, no questions asked. So, click that tough ring link in the description below and get yourself a tough ring. Yes, toughest ring on the planet. We all know we need three ingredients, man. Three ingredients? Three ingredients, man, that's all we need. What are the three ingredients? Flour, sugar, and salt. This, <laughs> no, for this we need oomph or okay. compression, okay. the muscle. We need spark and, and fuel. Okay. And usually, what I like to do first is before I even look at, you know, that we call those a vitals in a motor. You know, you go to a doctor, 
doctor is going to check your blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate. And if you find a doctor that writes a prescription without checking your vitals, go find another doctor, man. He's not very good. <laughs> so we're going to check the engine's vitals here first. But what I like to hear is let's uh, let's just kind of hear what it sounds like cranking on it. Let me just let me just hear. You you hit that. I'm going to bang on a starter. I need a hammer. I got one. It's homemade, man. <laughs> Hit it! Okay. Hit it one more time. Okay. <laughs> Have you heard this thing crank? Yeah, it cranked the first day. But these guys shouldn't have. Could be a battery. Let's get a jumper. Yeah. I mean, I you put my hand on the starter and it's engaging. I, I came from a family that if you were going to own a, a car, yeah. you were going to fix a piece of junk, yeah. you know? And so it was kind of like a necessity that I learned how to work stuff. Here we go. Come on, baby. Hey. This battery is just tough. I might have a new one. Well. You know, let's do this. If I can get just a crank or two out of it, I'll know whether I got spark. And I can... This dude is smart. He's been in the business for 30 plus years just having his shop here in Centerville and knows all the ins and outs of this motor and all other motors. He said he started at a Land Cruiser shop. Cut his teeth there. It's a pretty cool way of putting it. I love, I love those old terms. So, all right, let's see if we can... Got some elect right. electricity. Uh huh. Okay, okay. That's got. It, I have, I'm gonna check Spark now. That wah, 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 tells me I got compression, but I mean, is it all equal in the holes? I don't know that yet. But let's do it again. Let's see if I got Spark. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, oh, this is throttle body inject. This ain't no carburetor. Somebody's put this Fitech on there. So. Crank it, let me see if it's spraying. Dang, I was gonna give a full car carburetor uh, seminar here, man. Ready? Let's go. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Have right, right. you, you got oil pressure? I don't, it, it, it sounds okay. But I was. The gauge ain't working or there's no oil pressure. Yeah, I mean, it sounds okay. But none of the gauges really move, so I don't know what's working, what's not. He's got a. We, we got, got oil. We got oil in it. Okay. Oh, he's got a, yeah, that's for the Phytech. It won't have the oil pressure reading on it, but it, it this old uh, hydraulic lifters, you'd hear them clattering if it didn't have oil pressure. Yeah, it sounded like it was doing all right. Well, magic, bro. Yeah. It, it starts and runs. All I had to do was it's, it, it need, no, it need, <laughs> no, it's the, it's the power of the Daves. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Now, Let's 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 listen to it again. I want to see if it's hitting on all eight. Yeah, Pedro! <laughs> Woo -hoo! Okay. Speaking of birthdays. So, so that'll tell you a few things. That popping mm -hmm. is either you got a flat cam, which this motor famous for or your ignition timing's off. Okay. So that's what we hope for? Yeah, but my, 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 old, my wisdom tells me it's probably not, because if your timing was off when I'm accelerating, it would be really laggy or something like that, or you'd hear it like pinging, like uh, marbles in a tin can, yeah. and I'm not getting that. I'd pull the valve covers off. This is so easy. We'd whip the valve covers off on this thing, and we'd bump start it. And we'd basically look at each rock arm and the push rod coming up, and we'd kind of visually look at it. And you're going to probably find the one, and and that's part of the disassemble on it. You got to get the valve covers off, the intake off. On this one, we'd pull the motor. Okay. But you could, you know, because the cam is this long, so you're going to have to get all this stuff out of the way, come through the front timing cover, get that cam out of there. In order to do that, you got to have the the valve covers off, the intake off, get the push rods out, and the rock mm -hmm. arms. But the next step would be a new cam, a new cam and lifters. Okay. But now, since you're talking to a motor guy, I would, I've got eight cylinders here. I would want to run a compression test. That would be another way you could, you could find a flat cam. You could run, in fact, now that I'm kind of talking out loud, 
I'd probably do that next. I'd run a compression test okay. and, and the hole that's got a flat cam after I check my timing, check my timing if that's right. If it's not right, I'll set the timing right, fire it up and try it again. But I'd bet almost lunch that it's the, 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 it's the cam. So I'd run a compression test. Like let's say the uh, compression was low on this side, number uh, one, one, two. So this firing orders, one, three, six, uh, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. So this is cylinder number one, uh, two, three, seven. So, so let's say it was on one of this side, the odd side of this motor, the firing order of this motor, and I had low compression on this hole, number five. I'd pull the valve cover off, check to make sure that the push rods, you know, going up as much as they should, that I didn't have a flat lobe on the cam. If I didn't, I had low compression, then the head's gotta come off. What I'm saying is I wouldn't tear into the motor to do a cam till I knew that I had good equal um compression. First step would be compression test. Yeah, I think so. And because then you then you you could ensure the customer, hey, I know I got a solid you know, inside the cylinders. The rings are good, the valves are good, mm -hmm. but you got a flat cam. Now, let's make let's just since we're talking, yeah. and I'm telling you, when you get a flat cam, a cam's made out of metal. Mm -hmm. The lifter's made out of metal. So when it goes flat, it's basically metal grinding itself apart inside the motor. So you just really have to go to your customer and say, you know, this is the problem. This is the things that can be caused when that problem happens. And as long as they want to take responsibility for it, yeah. you can put a band-aid on it, so to speak. But if the compression was off and it was the timing, no. you check that first before I would check. the customer. Right now, I'd check the timing. i put a timing light on this. I can, I can do that if you got one. And if you don't, I can get. I'll, I'll come back with one. It'd be my. It'd be my pleasure to show you my shop. It really would, dude. Because I, I. This I will promise you. You have never in your life seen a shop as nice as the one out here. The uh, 1969 Land Cruiser is now up at Dave's Auto Center shop, and we are on our way there now to start running some tests, do some timing tests, some compression tests, and find out what the issue is. If it's as simple as a timing issue or if it's a flattened cam and we're gonna have to pull the motor and pull the cam and possibly find a new motor. Seeing a shop this immaculate and this organized really makes me wanna have like good stations set up all through the shop. All the mechanics have their own tools and we got stuff scattered everywhere and they take their stuff from project to project. It would be nice if you know me and you had a station, a bench, a toolbox, and an area. Maybe we should tell Heavy D. Maybe you could get just one, one sliver, one little slice for the old Sparks Motors YouTube. I don't know what that's for. You know, let's just leave it unhooked for now. I just, I just want to get this thing cranked. My guess is I got a flat camshaft. You want to, you want to give I, me? And our hope is that it's a timing issue. Yeah. <laughs> you want to grab me your timing link, dude? Yeah. It took us an hour and a half to go this far in my shop. <laughs> what, we've been five minutes, six minutes? <laughs> It's hard when you got snow cats and tanks and... I know, dude. Your shop is totally like... I go in there and I see all this stuff tore down. Whoa, it gives me the willies. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. One day we'll just call Dave, see if we can put it all back together. <laughs> oh. Everything's taken apart. You want to come put it back together? <laughs> you know, I got to make this even easier. Somebody give me a uh, Schrader valve tool. Please. Give me a Schrader valve tool. There you go. How did he have that ready so fast? <laughs> These guys are trained, man. They're good. They had them in hand already. They're good, man. That's incredible. I do this all the time, man. I actually believe that a little bit of prep work makes your whole job go better. Okay, let's crank this thing up and see if we can fire it up. You got it. <laughs> I am the fun guy at the shop that gets to tell people, hey, let's go on an adventure, let's go rescue something. That's your job. Grab the chains and binders, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Mine is how to get the job done right and everything. And so sometimes it's... They don't always like getting... Am I easy to work for, Kyle? Watch it now, buddy. Watch it. Put this on social media. Watch it now. <laughs> I think Dave's a great boss, but he will tell you when you're doing something wrong. Good. That's actually what you need. Or your business won't run. <laughs> <laughs> these, these, these are distributor wrenches, dude. They're to get, they're fancy, now you know. fancy little wrenches to get in where it's hard to get. And I have my particular one for a Chevy. 
And this is this one right here. And I need a flashlight. Hey, Tyson. Yeah. I sure appreciate your help, dude. Yeah. I couldn't do it without you. How are you? Good, so, how are you? Doing good. Oh, this, <laughs> Dave, this is my son, Miles. I thought you were Miles. He's yeah. like, where's Miles? He's got the timing gun somewhere. He's shining it down on the belt so you can see when everything's firing, when the belt's coming around, when the pistons are at the top, when the fuel's coming in. And you adjust your timing that way by watching the gun, watching, twisting your cap. Hit it, Tyson. Let me just hear it. Yeah. Yeah, I got the timing off. I, yeah. can, can you see it? Yeah, you're, you're good news. Timing so that everything's running in the right time. So you get your air, your fuel, and everything right when it's supposed to so it runs smoothly. If you get them in a different order or different timing, it doesn't run very well. It chokes itself out or runs too hot or it, timing. When it's perfect timing, everything runs perfect. That's okay. So I need a vacuum gauge, Tyson. Let's just set it with a vacuum gauge, get it close. Okay, they don't have a timing pointer on this motor. Okay. Now we can make one. Well, we probably ought to get one on here for the guy. Yeah. This is, this is old man sh right here. <laughs> this, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna set timing with a vacuum gauge. You wanna use a manifold vacuum, not ported vacuum. Everybody, do you know what the difference is? Ah, you say no, let me tell you what it is. <laughs> Port, or manifold vacuum comes straight off the, it, it's below the throttle plates is the best way to explain it. So anything below the throttle plates, whether it's a throttle body or a carburetor, manifold vacuum is below that. Ported vacuum is when you have to crack the throttle and, and it's now, then you get vacuum. That's usually on a vacuum advance is where you want ported vacuum. But we're gonna go, from manifold vacuum, and it's that port right there that I want to grab. Oh, we can grab this one here. There, see how it's now, it's up to like seven, 16 or 17. What you want to go for is the highest manifold vacuum you got, but see how my vacuum Locking advance away. is hitting the, it's hitting the man, that's as far as I can turn. So what he was doing with that distributor in the back, is he's got his distributor wrench, he's got the cap he can twist, and it just adjusts the timing as you go. Hit it! Yeah, hit, hit it again. Turn it off. Okay. I don't know what to say. Oh, sh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're a little low on uh, cool stuff. <laughs> a little dry. <laughs> okay. We're going to let the motor cool down now. Thank goodness we haven't been running very long. I did check oil. Boys and girls. <laughs> Let us now discuss with you some of the, we talked about the vitals with Dave in his shop the other day, compression, air and fuel, and spark. There's also very important vitals. Dave, you want to take us away? Oil and what else? I would say some water, some coolant. Yes, coolant, coolant, Dave. Very good, yeah. very good. Hey, I have great news. In the middle of all that, Dave was like, dude, your friend's going to be happy. It ain't a flat cam. It's not a flat cam. His hope has prevailed. And the timing was the issue. So now we're going to button up a lot of the other stuff. But now we're wow, cool, cooling in, keep the engine okay, cool, man. fire back up, Fishing. dial everything in. Merchandise. Uh oh. Leaking. Is there anything that's not leaking? I mean, let's take a look at that. Right Is it the bottom hose? Yeah. At the bottom? Wait, you've got to get the thing up. Is there a Oh, this is. We're going to have to drop the, the uh, torque converter cover. All right. So usually on the front of your timing plate, there's a pointer that shows you where top dead center is. Well, this one doesn't have it, so they've been nice enough to order us a tool that will show us where top dead center is, but he's going to review, remove the uh, first spark plug and look inside the first cylinder and find top dead center so that we can start our whole timing process. Today we're going to make you the official nut bolt guy. Do you see, can you see that bolt yep. down in there? Mm -hmm. So lefty loosey, righty tighty. Okay. Sure you're familiar with that one. We're gonna, I think we're gonna be pretty close to there, but let her rip, dude. Hey, you got, go ahead. Okay, turn it off. We gotta reset our distributor. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our distributor's in the wrong spot. So what do we gotta do? We got two choices here, boys and girls. One, we could lift the distributor up out of there and change its clock position, which I'm more inclined to do. I need a straight slot screwdriver. Today we're gonna make you the official nut bolt guy. Do you see, can you see that bolt yep. down in there? Mm -hmm. 
So lefty loosey, righty tighty. Okay. Sure you're familiar with that one. And we're gonna I think we're gonna be pretty close to there, but let her rip, dude. So the distributor cap right here is what they're messing with. It was in the wrong place. So they Clock could not position. they couldn't get it clocked in the right position to be able to make the timing right. So now we're gonna pick it up, move it, clock it into the right position so that we can adjust it and oh, make man. the timing go right. Easy cheesy lemon squeezy, right? So in that position, it's pointed right there at that piece of casting. See mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I want it to be pointed there. So I'm gonna lift it up. Move it over a couple. Just one tooth. I'm gonna try to feel that tooth when I lift it up out of there. Let's see, come on. Come on. There we go. Because now. Now you can get it. Do you see where I'm lined up with that casting? I'm all the way over here. Yep. So now I. You have I think, that much more. I think I just got one click on that gear. Okay. So now what I want to do, just bump that starter and that you'll see how that distributor, see how it's not, it's not dropped in all the way. Should just drop right in? Yeah, drop, go ahead and just tap it. Like there. There you go. Okay. Nice. All right. Now. Wait, is that your first time? One, eight, three, four, six, five, seven, two. Let's put two on there. So that would be this one. Okay, that's the this very front one. This is two. Yep. So we're gonna put that one there. Let me just go ahead and get this cap on here now. All right. So this is what goes from the distributor cap. Take, take your spark down to your spark plugs, but this is, uh, this boot was bad, wire is bad, which means it could have been mark, arcing out on the manifold, which would cause misfire. Basically, we think we got the motor that's running great. Distributor cap is probably clocked wrong, and some old wires could have been replaced. Can we fix those things? I think this cruiser is ready to get cruising. I don't want to forget where we got number one on here. So we're going to call that number one right there, big guy. Okay? Perfect. Number one. You can really call, if you think about it, you can basically call anyone you want number one. As long as the rotor's pointed at that at compression, then you just do your timing, change do, all the yeah, numbers. Just, just change it where you Pouring want it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now I'm going to have eight, so I'm thinking we're going to go for a short one on eight. And this is on your side, Dave. Gotcha. They just they mop right behind you here, huh? <laughs> yeah. I feel bad wearing. I'm going to get some slippers yeah. to wear in your shop. I think so. Come on. I feel like I gotta pull this plug out and find number one again, Tyson. Good. Make something happen here without a fire. Go ahead. Come on. This is where I get it. Um, why wouldn't this thing fire up, man? Let it rip. <laughs> there goes his muffler. Hit it again. There yeah, it is. to go. There it is. I don't know what I want to get a... Uh... <laughs> I tried to grab that for real quick. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> We're close. We're close. We're close, folks. Oh no, we uh, got an air bubble somewhere, which found its way back out where the coolant goes, and poof, showered us down with some coolant. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna clock my wires one way uh, in order so I can just turn this distributor more. So I'm thinking that they gotta go clockwise. Is that what you said? I'm thinking because you want it to. Yes. You're pulling it this so, way. So we're going to move every wire one 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 way, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Take them off. Move them, to, move them clockwise one one. I think so, Dave. Work the gas pedal for me, please. This is getting to really just. I mean, this is irking the crap out of me. So, how could we got the look? Let's just think about it again. Damn it. 
we're here, and we want to be able to take that distributor, and we couldn't, we couldn't move it more. We, must, we, we went the right way, didn't we? Let's, okay, I'm here, and I want to get it more to there. So we went this way. Which way did we go, guys? We went the wrong freaking way. Yeah, she's going counterclockwise, right? Shit. Did you want to go? We did. We went the wrong way. You want number no, one to no. be... No, what I'm... Okay, here, and I, I need to turn the distributor more to get it this way. So if I'm going to get my... Yeah, I, I do. Go counterclockwise. Yeah, I had to go counterclockwise. But now you just go back, too. <sighs> what a joke. Is that kind of fun game? What a joke. <laughs> how, how, bad, how, stu how, how bad could I be? Okay, so... So let's start to go to this one. It's got to go to here. Yep, and this one, and we're going to need to get a longer one. Yeah, and then. All right, so we needed more room with the distributor cap, but we could not clock it any farther one direction. So either you got to take the distributor out and move it along those gears or rewire, re put your uh, wires in a new position. Well, the first time we clocked the distributor where it needed to be and then moved our wires clockwise, which was the wrong way. I should have known. So then we had to redo it and put the wires two back, you know, to replace one back from where we were. It'll make sense when you see it. Anyway, what we did was we've got the distributor in the right place. We've got the wires to the spark plugs oh in the God. right place. Everything is hooked up. Now the motor is running and he's got his timing tool. You see his timing gun. And he's flashing it down there at his mark and his timing belt. He can see everything hitting at the right time so that he'll perfect the timing of the motor, which will then make everything run 100%. And Darren's motor will be ready to rock and rip down there in Hurricane. We're done. Hit Sweet. the key. Let's see if it fires up real good. Moment of truth. And and trim up that starter. Fix up that starter. Now that's gonna eat that that yeah. ring here right up. We'll edit this. Yeah. At least how much? That for fun. How much am I screw up? Are we supposed to show? Yeah, you can show people. You know, I think it's important yeah. that people see that this isn't, you know, that it, that it, it you got to stay with it. Excuse us, Mr. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, it's like me getting the clock position wrong. Yeah. The first one got wrong because we were 180 off. That happens all the time, except Tyson. And then setting them wires, have, you know, doing that, that was just me not thinking right. But anyway, sometimes it's the last, and you know this. It's the last 10% of a job, it's 90% mm -hmm. of the headache. I mean, yep. Is that right? 100% of the time. <laughs> yeah. It is. I feel like it's every time. Yeah, it is. Every time it's the it's last, and, and, and that's what I would tell mechanics out there. It's that last 10%. I got this saying, it's called, the accuracy and thoroughness of your work is a representation of the quality of your craftsmanship. Well, ask Diesel Dave, viewers Di a Diesel a, Dave kicking a butt. You guys want to see a 68 Chevelle get a... Twin turbo LS9. I, th I want to see it. You want to see it. <laughs> Put it in the comments below. Go ahead. Tell Dave. Should get you pull it, it in done, next? Get it done yeah. or we're not watching anymore, <laughs> you Dave. All right, guys. We got the Land Cruiser all buttoned up here at Dave's Auto Center. And the question was, will that motor run? Well, as you saw, that motor runs and it runs good. We just took it for a test drive. It's working! Oh, it runs perfect. There are a few other things that I may want Darren to look at on this Land Cruiser to uh, possibly get fixed. Maybe the lift, maybe some better brakes. But as far as the motor goes, I'm telling you it's top notch. So for now, I'm gonna go call Darren and see what else he wants to do to this because this is a great Land Cruiser and his son is gonna be pumped. If you got any motor needs, if you got car trouble, you're gonna wanna talk to Dave's Auto Center because this guy does top notch work and he usually comes with a really nice life lesson. The man is a genius, has a lot of experience, a fantastic shop full of all the tools you could ever want. So if you got any motor needs, hit up Dave's Auto Center, give him a follow because he's putting out some great content too. All right, let's go call Darren.